Hello and welcome to this Electrical Principles training video. In this video we're going to continue considering our SR units, so if you haven't already done so then please click the link in the description below to download the worksheet and fill that in as we go through the video. Now in this video we're going to be looking at the SR units that relate to magnets and magnetism. So the first question you may quite rightly ask is, why on earth as electricians would we be interested in magnets? What's that got to do with electricity? Well the answer is everything. In fact, what we call electricity, we would probably be better off calling electromagnetism. It's one of the four fundamental forces that govern the universe. And in reality, it's very difficult to make lots and lots of electricity without very powerful magnets. And actually, you can use electricity to also make very powerful magnets. The two are just slightly different projections of the same phenomenon. So first of all, let's talk about the SR units for magnetic flux. Now, obviously, we're not going to go into this in masses of depth in this video. For that, please see my other videos on magnets and magnetism. Uh, in this, we're going to be looking at the SR unit for magnetic flux, and we're going to be looking at the SR unit for magnetic flux density. So let's think about magnetic flux first of all. So looking at our worksheet, we can see here that the mathematical symbol that we use is the Greek letter phi, which looks a bit like this. It's a circle with a line going vertically through it like that. That is the the Greek letter phi, and the unit is called the Weber. Now it's pronounced Weber, but it's spelt with a W because I think that the uh, gentleman that this named for was German, so uh, his name is pronounced Weber. And the unit symbol that we use for this is a capital W with a lowercase b to differentiate it from our unit of power, which is obviously a W for watts. So magnetic flux is basically just a measurement of how much magnetism there is surrounding a magnet. You'll see in other videos that I've made we can represent magnetic fields by using uh, lines emanating from the magnet. I've got a magnet here, uh, it's just a, a weak fridge magnet effectively, and you can see that that sticks on the board via its magnetism. But it's a very, very weak magnet and therefore it doesn't have a lot of magnetic flux around it. Now we could increase the strength of the magnet by increasing the amount of magnetic flux that it has by perhaps making it out of different materials or treating it in a slightly different way. But there's actually another way that we can increase the strength of a magnet as well, and that is by affecting its magnetic flux density. Now this is very similar to magnetic flux, but it builds on it by taking into account how tightly packed the magnetic flux is into a given area. So let's take the same amount of magnetic flux. Let's say we've got the magnetic flux that surrounds this magnet. If we were to take that same amount of magnetism that surrounds that, but pack it down into a much smaller space, concentrate it effectively into a smaller area, we end up with a stronger magnet. And that is what we refer to as the magnetic flux density. It's how tightly packed the magnetism is into a given area. So to just formalize our SR units on our worksheet, uh, this is one of my very favourite ones because uh, this is one that I used to get my learners trying to guess what the mathematical symbol is for magnetic flux density. Uh, so perhaps they might think it was M or MFD or something like that and we'd go through pretty much the entire alphabet until they realised that obviously it's a capital B. Again, I'm not sure why that is. Perhaps someone can enlighten me why capital B is used for magnetic flux density and uh, we'll be glad to hear about that because I genuinely don't know what the answer is. Now, the unit for magnetic flux density is named after Nikola Tesla, who was a remarkable man, uh, an engineer, a, a scientist, uh, a great inventor who made lots and lots of uh, amazing things, and in fact probably made our modern world possible uh, by coming up with the concept of an AC distribution system. Quite a remarkable gentleman. Uh, so this unit is named in his honour, uh, the Tesla, uh, and we give it the unit symbol, capital T for Tesla there. Now this is quite a nice one because it's a good example of how we can understand how SR units work because actually the Tesla is a measurement of the amount of Weber's per metre squared. So actually to kind of understand that we could take the Weber's surrounding a magnet and divide it by the area that it's covering in metres squared and that would convert it into Tesla's for us. But we've given that uh, unit of Weber's per metre squared a special name, we call it the Tesla. So there we go, we've got our SR units sorted for magnets and magnetism. Again, as we've said, for more information, please watch my other videos on this subject. It's a very important one for electricians. Typical exam questions that relate to the SR units for magnets and magnetism. Uh, you'll be asked what is the SR unit uh, for magnetic flux and also for magnetic flux density. So make sure that you've got those clear in your mind. Again, if I was setting the questions and I've seen this come up where you get asked the question, what is the SR unit for 
magnetic flux density and the examiner will put both Teslas and Weber's in there to try and throw you off. So try and get those the right way around and that'll help you out enormously with your online exams. So hopefully this video has been helpful to you. We've seen those SR units, we've seen their uh, units, the mathematical symbols and the unit symbols, and there's plenty more SR units to come, so stay tuned for more. All that remains in this video is to say, thank you very much for watching.